Greetings. I'm here on this incredibly windy day. In fact, there's a wind warning issued today here for gusts of 110 kph. What better day <laughs> than this to be out here pruning the mulberry tree? I have a sock on my microphone, but I have a feeling that some of these wind gusts are still going to get through it, so excuse the rumbling in the audio, and perhaps sometimes you won't be able to hear me. But at any rate, we're between gusts right now at least. I'm under the gun to finish pruning the mulberry because the winter has been very bizarre by recent standards. And suddenly it's gone from steady minus temperatures, like really cold negative temperatures, to right now it's 18 degrees Celsius. No idea what that is in Fahrenheit, I don't care. But at any rate, it's very warm. And as I've been pruning the mulberry, it's already producing sap. Now this is not like a maple tree that I've been tapping for some time now for my delicious sap. It's already waking up and I don't like to be pruning when the tree is fully awake. So anyways, I've finished the eastern half of the tree up at the top, but I haven't yet finished the western half here as the wind tries to blow me over. So I just had a thought while I was pruning and I wanted to bring out the camera, so this is going to be very short. I really want to get this finished. I've been harping on quite a bit for the last few months about my father since his death. This is the first time that I'm pruning the mulberry tree since he died. And it's so bizarre. My father taught me how to prune fruit trees when I was just a very young boy. And it never really meant much to me, the fact that he taught me, because it was just something that we did every year. We had so many fruit trees. I'm catching up now. I've got an awful lot of fruit trees here of my own. You might be able to see out of focus at the far edge of the shot there, some black fuzzy thing wiggling in the wind. That's one of my peach trees. Anyways, it was just normal, standard thing for us to do every year, help him pruning all of our fruit trees. So that when I grew up and had my own fruit trees, it was just automatic. It didn't mean anything to me. And now that he's gone and I'm doing it in his absence, it really made an impact on me. Especially because coincidentally, this is the first year that I've actually got this tree in the shape that I want. Maybe you can see there on that side how it's so wispy looking and windblown with all the branches leaning down so nicely, just like this one here that I've just been clipping to make it easy to pick the fruit. And it's getting such a beautiful bonsai look to it. I just love it. And as I was finishing that half of the tree and I stepped back 
to see if I missed any of those tall suckers up at the top, which is easy to do from down here. I stepped back to get a different perspective and I, and I was struck by the beauty of the tree now that that shape is really taking. And I thought of my father. And it's funny, it's taken me seven years to get this tree in the right shape. I wonder what he would say if he could see this. I think it's really important for us to make sure that we tell those that we love how much they mean to us. Because just like how one of these crazy gusts could bring down these trees and kill me right here and now, it's no different for any of us. There's no guarantee in life. So don't leave things unsaid. With that, I'm going to make one more snip. Before I let you go, these suckers are so huge. Look at this one. This grew in one year. This is last year's growth. It's just spectacular. I'm six feet tall. This is a good 10 feet long. I love to use these as stakes. Just snip it to whatever length. Well, I'm not going to snip it yet because I don't know what length I need it at. But when I need a stake, I just get my shears, cut it to whatever length I need, instant stake. And that's actually something else I could mention is a sucker, as these are called, these parasitic growths that pop up. They're so full of life energy that if I take this thing that's the thickness of my thumb where I cut it, it's just very large. If I just took this and stuck it in the ground, it will grow just like that. So if you want to grow your own mulberry tree, just walk up to one at this time of year, early, early, well, it's still late winter. So late winter, snip off a sucker, and then if you're going more than two or three steps, then it's gonna get dry where you cut it by the time you stick it in the ground wherever you're going. So just cut it again a few inches or maybe a foot or so, depending on how big the sucker is. I don't recommend one this big. It'll be easier. Well, then again, you can just cut it way further up where it's thin. And that way, as it runs out of moisture, it runs out of moisture away from the cut. So if you had something where you had five feet or more that you're going to be cutting off, you could leave this for a week and then snip it and it'll still be juicy. Stick it in the ground and it'll grow just like that useless information, I'm sure, to most of you, but who knows. Anyways, the wind is slowing down and I want to finish this job.